When we talk about the Mitsubishi Sport Series, we're always talking about the Evolution Series, but we keep on forgetting that there's one particular gem that's hidden in between, the Gallant Rallyat. So the Gallant Fortis Rallyat behind me is a pretty rare car in the Kenyan car scene. Um, the reason for this is because the production dates for the Gallant Fortis Rallyat was basically 2011-2012 in the Japanese market. But now you can see that only 2012 years are being imported into Kenya at this particular time. But like the car behind me, the reason it doesn't sell particularly well is many people don't know about it. And the guys who know about it are probably just thinking about why should I buy a Rallyat, why not buy an Evo? Because some, to some people, this car looks the same as an Evo but it's not. So the Rallyat behind me is powered by the same 4B11 block that comes as standard with the Evo, but as in the Evo, it comes around 291 horsepower stock. Behind me, we have around 240 horsepower and around 253 pound-feet of torque. When we're talking about the transmission, it comes as standard with the Evo 10 transmission, which is still the six-speed SST transmission. Whereby in the Evo 10, you have three modes. You had normal, sport, and super sport. With this, you only have normal and sports. I talked about practicality. So, we're just going to assume that I'm carrying my bags of shopping. I've come from shopping, maybe my goods are a little bit bigger than normal. So I'll probably just open the tailgate. So once it's open, you basically have two handles for moving the seats back. So you pull on the handles, I'll basically throw all my cargo, okay, okay, not throw, I'll place all my cargo professionally and I'll basically have enough space for my cargo. Also, you have a flat tire, or something you have a full-size spare wheel so it's very convenient for you <laughs> so since we're back here already let's talk about the key differences between the sport back and the evo so one with the evo you can't drop down the seats if you have bigger pieces of furniture shopping whatever number two with the evo you don't have a full-size spare the evo comes with a tire repair kit and also with the diffuser at the back the evo diffuser is a little bit more aggressive the Evo still has twin exhaust pipes, but like the arches on the Evo, more aggressive. It's got, it's got some meat to it. Some other differences are such as the fender. So the fender, the Evo 10 fender has some slits at the back of the fender whereby it allows for better ventilation. Also brakes. The Evo comes as standard with PBS wheels and Brembo brakes. Here we can see some pretty small brakes that, okay, they do the job of stopping the car, but they're not as good as the Evo. Some differences at the front, such as the bumper. When the Evo, the grille is basically blacked out and it's got more ventilation and also the grills. The grills on the Evo are more of some sort of mesh-like because here they're more of like some kind of like blocks. The main differences come in the engine bay. So under the hood, the main difference between this and the Evo is basically the turbo. So on this we've got a single scroll turbo, whilst in the Evo we have a twin scroll turbo. The turbo location is still at the same place, but like the intercooler pipings, on the Evo, the aluminium pipings, here it's some sort of rubberized material. The location of the bypass valve. On the Evo, it's at the rear of the engine. The intake shape, size of the Evo is also different. And also another pretty big difference is the Evo battery is actually in the trunk, not up here. The last difference that I can see, basically, the front strut bar. On the Evo, it's got, you see this space uh, over here? So the Evo strut bar is basically hooked into three different places and it's more longitudinal because this has got some sort of line to it. Uh, it's not a pretty line, but it's just there. But the hooking points are still the same. So in case you're curious to find out who owns this particular beast, in case you see it on the road or anything. So he's an MK member, so careful. Yes. How are you doing today? I'm good. Nice. Yeah. So Kefa owns... He's owned this car for roughly a month to two months? Two months, yeah. yeah. So maybe you can tell us why you chose this as opposed to its competitors? Well, for me, the reason... Okay, let me start by saying that at first I've owned a base Lancer for a year. It was a two-litre naturally aspirated engine and I, I wanted to do an upgrade, but at the same time I wanted a car that will still serve me for the work I do and uh, the daily driving that I do. So I took a good look at all the alternatives that I had, the WRX, that is a massive competitor to this. And I saw that the Rallyat was just the best option 
first the the other car that I had was a really good car and I wanted to stay with the brand because I personally decided that I am a Mitsu guy and not a Subi guy and generally Ralliats are rare it's a really rare gem in Kenya even in Africa and uh, it's nice being unique I love being unique yeah, yeah. so one issue that many guys talk about with the Ralliat Evos uh. you know guys are always scared of SST transmission and also about we can also talk about maintenance costs or yeah. transmission basic services so, yeah. SST transmission honestly speaking it's a very hard transmission to maintain because it demands a lot in terms of service uh, after every 40000 kilometers you need to change the oil and it's very delicate especially in terms of uh, let's say doing launches for those who may know what launch control is uh, for this one it's very limited so the more you do it the faster you kill the gearbox basically it's a, it's a good car if you know how to use it and if you use if you keep on maintaining it properly but if you keep on thrashing it every now and then it will die definitely without doing service this car you can't maintain it because i think about thrashing cars you know all cars are basically i don't think there's an immune car to launches and yeah, everything yeah. even with dsgs mm. normal automatics you know if you're a bit careless mm. you always kill it you know? true true so now you can tell us about you know many guys want to find out okay if i buy this car Will I be able to fuel it oh. about the consumption? <laughs> ah, Ralliat. This car, in terms of consumption, it's, it consumes way much more than the ordinary Lancer, but a little bit less, just a little bit less than the Evo. Yeah. So for daily, for daily city right. driving, yeah. it gets, okay, sometimes it consumes a lot when you're in traffic, and, uh, but if you're going for long distance, yeah. it's relatively... Economical. economical yeah but generally i can say it's an, an economical car it's not economical yeah. it's not for a guy who wants to save on every penny yeah. it's not a car that you'd fuel like let's say 500 because if you put that here it's almost nothing to it yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's it's hard living with it a bit hard but not as hard as the evil so it's there but you you learn you learn to love it with time yeah so it's more of a smiles per gallon car yeah, something like that. But if you thrash it, consumption is terrible. Yeah. yeah. And what about regular maintenance service? Service, is it, basic, is it just the basic service whereby plugs? Or is there anything else you have to do during normal services? Okay, during the service, I'd say the most delicate thing goes back to the transmission. Mm. Because with the engine, you only need to do the oil, the oil change, the oil filter change, the air filter. And they probably you can check on the spark plugs yeah. just in case they are worn out or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah, and also check on the belt to see if it's okay. Yeah. And then you do the ordinary changes for the brake fluid. You just check them, the coolant. But the most delicate thing about this car is the transmission. The I transmission. repeat, yeah, the engine is solid, yeah. but the transmission is a it's it's a bit shaky. Yeah. So you guys have had it here from the owner himself. Yeah. So you know. If you can spend a little bit and you like to have a little bit of fun, yeah. the Evos cost quite a lot more. This particular car, the difference in price is maybe around like 800k to a million. Yeah, exactly. So if you're looking for something that's fun, not economical, practical, you should consider yourselves a Rallyat. So I'd like to go for a small drive just to feel the car. I've driven sure. it before, so I can uh, understand how it is. I've driven a couple of Evos before. Yeah. But I'm very curious to know how this compares to its competition. Don't fall in love with it too much. <laughs> That's what I'd tell you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kefa. Thank you, too. Yeah. yeah. I think I should give you the keys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So, yeah. You got the keys. So, I'm finally driving the rally, and I must say, first impressions, the transmission is a little bit more aggressive for what I thought it's going to be. Don't get me wrong, the shifts are pretty quick, it's pretty smooth, but it's very punchy, it's very in your face. Right now I'm driving in, I'm in normal mode right now. I'll try out sport in, in a few minutes. But like, I mean, it's a decent ride. I'm not, on a, I'm not on the smoothest road, as you can see. But the suspension soaks up all the bumps. 
there's no much drama. I'll do a short pull in a few. But if you're looking for a daily driver that's fun, because you know, if you want to boost, you just boost and it's all there. It's, it's so easy. That's what I'm trying to say. It makes it very easy for you, which I really like. So like right now I'm going up a hill. I can feel, okay, it's a small turbo, yeah? It is. So it's rated for around 250 foot pound of torque, but like you kind of feel maximum torque from around like 4,000 RPM, which is pretty high in the rev range. But you know, turbocharged cars are meant to be, okay, not economical, yeah? They're supposed to give you value for money in a way, because it's only a two liter and you feel it struggle at some point. Yeah, and it's not it's not the best two liter turbo out there. So let's talk about the all wheel control system. So as I said, it's got three modes. It's got tarmac, it's got gravel, and it's got snow mode. So in tarmac mode, it's basically a front wheel drive biased car. That's perfect for city driving. If you want a little bit of fun, some maybe a bit, it's going to be rear wheel biased. You put it in gravel mode, it's basically just a button. Then to split the torque 50-50, front and rear to the front and rear differentials, you'll basically put it into snow mode. So I'm currently in gravel mode. Okay. I'm not pushing the car to its limits, so I'm not really feeling anything much. But let's see. So I've been driving on normal mode for for a couple of minutes. So I'm going to try out sport mode and see if I can feel the difference. I know I will. Let's just try it out. Okay, fine. So I'm now in sport mode. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So let's talk about the things that I don't like. Straight out of the bat, transmission is a little bit too harsh. Maybe that's something that service can take care of. I don't know if it's this particular car, but it's not as smooth as you'd expect it to be, especially for someone who doesn't know what's going on. Don't be alarmed because I'm sure the transmission is fine. But you know, if you're used to a normal CVT transmission, a normal automatic transmission, there are certain standards of smooth that you're used to. With this, you don't get those standards of smoothness. And it's mostly because it's basically a performance transmission. The suspension of the car, the ride is, it's not the smoothest ride, you know. Okay, fine. It's it's basically a, a, a sportish car. So Mitsubishi made the suspension a little bit firmer than the Lancer's suspension, but there's no much body roll. Okay, fine. There's body roll, yes, because if I turn in, all of a sudden, body roll is always going to be there. A small amount of body roll is okay, but it's not as stiff as the Evo suspension. But for a daily driver, this is good enough. So let's talk about the equipment the car comes as standard with. So the car comes with traction control, it comes with stability control, it comes with electronic brake distribution. You know, as far as I can count, I can only see two airbags. I don't know, most JDM cars come with two airbags. I know there are some that come with more, but this particular one, I can only see the two airbags. Yeah, it's a pretty simple Japanese car, but with a turbo, you know, so boost, yeah. You see how aggressive that is? It only tapped the accelerator slightly. It basically throws you, throws you back a little bit. If you don't like that, maybe it might be a, a little bit of a downside to it, but it's not bad, it's not bad. So here's the thing. If you just drive in the car to work, you have a family, you know, you town runner, you're going to pick up the kids in school, going for shopping, shopping car for your wife, it's an okay car. If you want more power, I'd suggest just get the Evo. Save up a little bit more money. Okay, fine. 800,000 to a million is it's not a little bit of money. It's quite a lot. But another thing, if this is your entry level into your basic turbo cars, your basic competitors are just the WRX for these power levels. Uh, if you're around 200 horsepower, 210 horsepower, 
you're basically looking at the uh, VW GTI. If you're looking for around 300 horsepower, that's when you're looking at the Evos and the STIs. Or there's also the Golf R. That's a very interesting car. A very interesting car. But for where this car is placed, you know, in between, it's a good car. It's not the worst. It could be worse. Seriously. There's always something interesting about experiencing different cars over a certain period of time. Should have been able to review the rally behind me, and I must say, I'm very impressed. I'm very gracious to the owner, Mr. Kefla, for giving us his particular beast today. So guys, please like the video, share the video, comment on the video, suggestions are always welcome, what car you'd like to see next, you know. So, yeah, guys, thank you.